What's up everybody? This is Jose from Sun and Life. Hey Katie. On today's video, we're going to be driving clear through Naples. We're on the east end right now on US 41 heading northbound. And we're going to take US 41 clear through Naples heading northbound US 41. Right now we are at the edge of the urban core of the city on the east end, which is the south end really. We call it East Naples. So we're close to uh, lately now. We're gonna drive north and just see Naples from one end to the other on US 41. The temperature is approaching the 90s, so we have to keep uh, the phone ventilated throughout the whole video. So if you hear a little bit of background wind noise, it's just because you gotta keep the uh, the air circulating around the phone to make sure it doesn't overheat. So I'll try to keep. Uh, the wind noise to a minimal, we just have to contend with that background noise from the fans because of the temperatures. Alright, so Naples, Florida is going through some hard times. Uh, the red tide is at a level it's never been in before. Photos on the internet this morning of dead fish all along the coast. I think eventually it's no longer a once in a while thing. It's a every single year, the whole entire winter, that fish. I mean, at the point we're at right now with the red tide, I think eventually real estate prices are going to have to change here or adjust because it's not a every once in a while thing. It's now a it's starting to look like a permanent thing every single year. This is 951. If you go south, which is a left here, you're gonna end up in beautiful Marco Island. Yeah. It amazes me how much people really don't understand what red tide is actually like. Yeah. Because there's a group that uh, wants to move to out of different places, and they're like, oh, we have it in California. It's like, not like you do no, here. It's a massive level. <laughs> Yeah. So if we were to take a right on 951, we'd be in Golden Gate City, Golden Ghetto. Yeah. So a right turn here, we're taking us in the, in the Golden Gate City, and eventually up to Immokalee Road. So Naples, you know, all the roads parallel each other, but US 41 takes an L heading north. So now we're heading, we're heading towards Naples Beach right now. But when we get to the coast, US 41 goes northbound. And as we're heading northbound, then we parallel all the roads. It's a, it's a grid pattern, really. Uh, really, there's no plans for infrastructure in Naples. Right here is Laley. It's a pretty nice community here on the right, Laley. Yeah, they just want to put in more and more communities and less roads. Yeah, there's not enough roads. There's no plans for any morning roads. Um, they are extending Vanderbilt all the way out to this to the Soto, but that's not really gonna. Do I actually, much. Yeah, I actually have a friend who uh, they actually paid him to take the back of his yard because they're gonna turn that into the Soto. And basically, uh, not the Soto, but Vanderbilt. They told him, we went to a meeting meeting, they told him so that you can go to the beach easier. He goes, for what? So I can see dead fish? <laughs> Left here, you can see there's a few Mexican restaurants. There's a few food trucks here that really suck. Uh, there's La Michoacana, Clinica Hispana. So there's a lot of Spanish business here. A few years ago, I went to the ice cream place there in Michoacana. It's really good. Azteca Market, a couple Latin supermarkets on this side over here. Because up ahead is a large Hispanic community yeah. called Naples Manor. And it's uh, probably one of the poorest places in the city of Naples. <laughs> when you uh, look at the city of Naples, you know, it's known for having wealth, but there's some really poor pockets. Like, it's not all rich people in Naples. There's, there's working class people. Up here on the right starts one of the working class communities known as Naples Manor. Is there is definitely not rich. There's a homemade Mexican food. Because there's a lot of Mexican stuff here. Um, a lot of Mexican, Haitian, some Cuban. 
mostly Mexican to this side of town here on the right prices are ridiculous but it's not a really a, I wouldn't want to live there uh, it's not really a fancy area somewhat not high crime but moderate crime and again just nothing but Mexican businesses uh, all through here another Mexican restaurant there Naples is one of the few places in Florida that's coastal that has a Mexican community. Most Mexican communities in Florida are going to be further inland, but you have to consider that this was all tomato fields way as far as like in those late as the 2000s where Mockler and 41 Road. Why did you turn on Siri? I don't know. I just touched the screen. I know you could do that. Yeah, you just turned so on you, Siri. If you touch the screen, it turns on Siri? Yes. Siri, why are there so many Cubans out here? That's probably my phone just hooks up. Okay, don't worry about it. Yeah. Anyways. Well, whichever one's hooked up to the thing. All this yeah. area of Naples, you know, used to be tomato fields. We moved down in the year 2000, and the tomato fields were on the intersection of a and 41. And then that changed drastically. So. All the way up to the year 2000, Immokalee and 41 were tomato fields. And that's why here in Naples you have a Mexican population along the coast where today most of the Mexican populations in Florida are going to be either further inland towards like Hernando, Hardy, Polk, just south central Florida, Glades, areas like that further inland. Naples is the only real coastal area that has a significant Mexican population is in Naples. A little bit in Bradenton, a little bit in Fort Myers, but Naples is one of the few places where the Mexican population is this close to the coast. And then by the time you get to Immokalee, which is far inland, then by Immokalee, it's like, I think 60%. Yeah. Now there's less Mexican. Now there's more Guatemalan, Salvadorans, Honduras. When I first moved down here, this whole area was like trees. Yeah. yeah they've, now they put new communities out here. And there's new Wawa's and all that. Yeah. This side of the road was all there. But... There used to be a small black area here off of... Um, and I actually worked. It was pretty hot, man. It was, yeah. it was popping. It was popping, man. Right? right here off of Hawaii behind this gas station. Yeah. Used to be a, a nice little hood off of uh, Golf Stream and all that, but uh, it's kind of probably gentrified by yeah. now. But I worked in the apartments that come up to the back, and uh, we did we worked there for like a week or two, doing like construction or something. I can't remember what it was, yeah. but behind that was a lot of uh, just grimy crap. Okay, so now we're approaching East Naples, which was the original seat, county seat. Um, the county seat for Naples used to be an Everglades city. For Kohler County, I mean, it was an Everglades city. But I think after a hurricane, was it Donna in the 60s? After one of the hurricanes, I can't remember which one, they moved the county seat to East Naples because it was just too, uh, too propense for hurricanes step up the AC for a minute just to cool down the phone like I said earlier just for a second Stay in the shade, right here. 
Don't go any further. Stay right here. Okay. I'm right in your shade. But, uh, yeah. I used to go to that, uh, Sonic with my dad. <laughs> no. I don't know, you know, these neighborhoods have got any better, but a lot of these neighborhoods here in East Naples weren't really great. I mean, when I lived down here in Naples Manor, East Naples, mm -hmm. weren't really great areas to live. But now they're building communities left and right, and it's kind of changed a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's a Walmart here on the right. So now we're approaching what's known as East Naples. Today, you know, it's, Naples is changing, and but these used to be kind of bad, rough areas. Uh, the courthouse is up here, so this area here has a lot of vagrancy because you have the jail at the intersection here at the on the right of us. That big building is the jail right there, Clark County Jail. Thankfully, I never ended up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a lot of times these areas here, you know, apartments. Oh, right. Apartments. Right. I was just finishing that up. Look but, at what that would be, Jose. Yeah, we'll look at it later. Yeah. This area here has a lot of vagrancy, too much vagrancy because the people get out of jail yeah. and they got nowhere to go, so then they end up around here. Yeah. So this area has always had a vagrancy problem. It, it goes up and down. Sometimes there's programs and it's better. Sometimes they get out, hit the streets, and this is where they land. Always, this area's always had like a homeless, begging, just kind of trashy aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Mostly because of that jail there. Gotta put the jail somewhere. And again, they put it in these neighborhoods back here where Connor used to be rough. There's mm -hmm. all these are actually like almost hoods back in here. They're fixing up the old Pizza Hut over there. Yeah. These neighborhoods here are pretty rough. Yeah. They've gentrified everything on the left. I think on the right is still a little bit rough. On the left, there's the Chinese buffet that's yeah. been open for years. It's really good. Yeah, it's kind of, this is kind of hood here. This is kind of like the entrance to Bayshore, that plaza there. Yeah. It's kind of always been hood. I used to come to the, there used to be a teen club there. Mm -hmm. One time I went and they like. I never went lit, there. Lit it up. Yeah, <laughs> you were more decent than that. Yeah. Yeah, I won't doubt that I went to Bravo and the Chinese buffet there. Everybody and, knew me. Craziest thing is that everybody that was there knew me. It was weird. I like they're fixing up the sidewalk. So, yeah. this is kind of like the more kind of transient, almost hood area of Naples. Luigi's close. Really? They, it looks like usual, but. And then from here on, it gets a little bit better as you start moving closer to downtown. Um, but then they're building a lot of crap in, towards this area. It should be open at this point, but I don't know why. And from here on, it gets fancier, but that little spot there is a little rough. It's not like dangerous or anything, but it's just a rougher part of Naples. Yeah. Luigi's is like a seasonal pizza place here in Naples. Look at that. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. See these condos over here? Alright, so we're now going to be entering downtown Naples, across the Gordon River. The water from Hurricane uh, Ian came right up to here. Yeah, I saw videos afterward of people driving through, through it with like jacked up vehicles. There's boats. They drove. Somebody drove a boat through, through Fifth Avenue South yeah. when it flooded. I saw that one. Yeah. They were trying to keep that video on the down low. They didn't, they didn't really want people to know how bad the... It, it got out, though. <laughs> it got out. Yeah. The well, red tide's supposed to be really bad. I don't know if we'll smell it or we'll feel it. We'll find out. Yeah. But it's supposed to be really high concentrations all through Naples right now. This bridge is 35. I'm going 16. I'm not saying you were speeding, I'm just saying it's 35, so yeah. people know, because if you don't, you get a ticket. Yep. If you want to argue, we can argue right now. Let me know what's good. Are you wanting to you argue? You want to swing, Will? I guess you want to argue. Big building going up here. My Naples ain't crap compared to Miami, let's just be honest. Yeah. Like, Naples, we were just in Miami. 
And uh, I'll be honest, Miami has left Naples behind. Yeah. Right there is uh, Majestic Fifth Avenue South. Down, the entrance to downtown Naples right there. That's uh, the entrance to Majestic Fifth Avenue South. Downtown Naples if we went straight. But we're going to go north on 41. This is that turn I was telling you guys about. If we went in there, it's all Ferraris and rich people and expensive cafes. And Now we're heading north. Beautiful afternoon. The sun's behind us now. And the sun will not be in our face. I'm going to cool the phone down. And after that, it should stay pretty much cool. new buildings going in in Naples so everywhere you look there's big buildings so they're, they're putting a lot of high-rises in which Miami put in high-rises and it's nothing wrong it's a big growing it's a growing state it's a growing area these old people have been fighting back growth and all they've done is held, held Naples back mm -hmm. and I think the damage is done because the wave of growth they try to slow down the wave of growth and all they, they've done in Naples is just spread out the population evenly. But by keeping the population density down, they've also just made commutes ridiculously longer. They, Naples is a disaster. Uh, a, a disaster of a community planning. Um, it really just, it's not, no other way to describe it but a disaster of planning. It really wasn't planned out well. Well, they, they, yeah. as the city grew, they've only looked out for the interests of a few old rich white people. Yeah. And they've screwed everybody else. The middle class, the people out in the estates, everybody's got screwed by what they, you know, they're, they're only looking out for themselves. Yep. So they've planned the city just catering to the needs of these old rich white people. Yeah. And they haven't, like, you know, like these furniture stores, they should all be four or five story buildings. Yep. I mean, at least a four, like, if, if let's say you're going to make a, a furniture store, let it be a four to five story building. You know, now you have uh, Naples is a giant parking lot, basically. A giant furniture store parking lot. Oh, baby, buy me a Bentley. Hey, honey, you're, no, you're not going to get anything unless you get me a Bentley. If you ever make demands like that, I'll knock you in the eye socket. Happy in this Toyota. <laughs> okay, look at me all funny, man. Yeah. Even the mall here, like, you know, the, 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 the Naples could have been, if they had allowed high rises, you could have had furniture stores at the bottom, a few apartments on top, maybe a Starbucks on the corner. You could have probably got coffee, worked, and lived in the same building like they do in Miami, but now you have to drive 45 minutes to Lehigh. The only reason there's no traffic now is because, uh, for one, it's a Sunday. Two, the red tide's so bad the tourism is down a little bit. That doesn't mean hotels aren't expensive. A hotel on the beach right now is still $1,000. Yeah. Can you imagine paying $1,000 to stay at a hotel on the beach only to see a bunch of dead fish and smell them? Coastal Center Mall, they've remodeled it recently. One of the most obsolete malls in America. Yeah. They closed the Nordstrom. They closed the Applebee's in North Naples. And they're putting Sbarro back in. <laughs> so we're in the shade here. Yeah, like Naples, it's like, I'm from here, man, like 20 years of my life here. And it's really disappointing how... Now they're building, like, they're the building right there going in right there. Now they're finally building, but, like, the wave is over. Like, they should have done this, you know. And now Miami got more expensive. 
Miami got more expensive than Naples, so it's possible that now people from Miami are moving over here because it's cheaper and the job market's not as competitive. So now you have people from Miami jacking up prices here. But rents here are still more expensive than Miami rents right right now off the hurricane at least. A few years ago Miami was more expensive. Now here it's more expensive. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's just um, Naples is two steps away from being California. Pretty much. It's like this place is two steps away from being California. Yep. They've catered just to these rich people here on the coast. And everybody else has got stuck with commutes that are, that are horrible. I mean, you pay so much money to live in Naples to go to the beach. Now you can't even go to the beach because it's the right time. So that's like kind of defeats the purpose. So they put some new businesses here a while back. That's what they needed to do. Like allow these types of businesses. That's where that good Cuban place yeah, is. That's what, the place is awesome. The it's bon bon. ridiculous expensive. But yeah. in this area, it's going to be expensive. This steakhouse is ridiculous expensive. Yeah. It's one of the few restaurants I've actually walked out of in my life. I've never seen it packed. Yeah. No, it's too expensive. How yeah. could they be packed? They may be like one Andres, customer. Yeah, $95 yeah. groceries. And I've someone who actually packs their food. And was like, why did I just pay for this? It wasn't worth it. It didn't look all that great. Mm -hmm. Expensive for nothing, basically. And like they have this median here, which looks pretty, but to be honest, eventually they're gonna have to knock it down and make it to win. Mm -hmm. Or they could run like a, like in Miami where they have um an overpass. Yeah. They could make an overpass here. Mm -hmm. they won't on top do it, of the trees, I don't know. They won't do it. They won't do it. Really? Anything that would be functional and make they this place better, they, they won't, won't do it. it. <laughs> Something has to get done because, I mean, right now it's nice and smooth. It's a nice drive now, but man, you can come out here during the wintertime, you know, on rush hour traffic and people commuting. Now it's a ghost town, of course. Nobody's here on Sunday. But tomorrow, this will be a different scenario. Tomorrow at this town, coming through here, oh yeah. Like literally, you could drive from North Naples to Naples Pier. We used to do it all the time in something like 15, 17 minutes, depending on how many red lights you get. But this is a, a traffic gridlock during weekdays. And since the hurricane, it's gotten even worse. Because now you have all the extra construction workers for the hurricane cleanup. You know, bad situation, even worse. I love these coconut trees and the palm trees. If only thing Naples needs is just a little bit of infrastructure and they won't put it in. Yeah. If they just built like a like a loop that went around the city. Yeah. Or just like a few touches of infrastructure would, would fix the problem. But these old rich people don't wanna they don't wanna let anything happen. Because they live over here by the beach, it doesn't bother them. They fly into the Naples airport. Off an of airport road behind the courthouse, they fly into there with a, in a private jet. You should see this crap. It's a private jet landing every uh, every three minutes down there. You know how much money it takes to fly a private jet? It takes that's like forty thousand dollars to lift that thing in the air. Every few minutes, one lands in the Naples airport. It's just just to give you an idea the kind of money these people have. But they land off an of airport road get in their Mercedes Benz and drive there that, that doesn't affect them it's like everybody else that lives in this metropolitan area that's not a billionaire gets stuck with traffic congestion red tide 
then of course they get to leave there in the winter. We're stuck here year round with all these problems. Living here sucked, and I feel like I feel like Sarasota really is better in a lot of ways. Yeah, they actually have infrastructure. There's different roads. Like they if actually, you don't want to take this road, you can take this road. Yeah, that's like that University and 75 overpass, and there's gridlock on 75 every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, 75 in Sarasota gets gridlocked. But it's north to south on the interstates. Yeah. Where here, it's north to south as well, but it's also east to west. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's gridlock in Bradenton and Sarasota, but it's not... Bad. They have larger highways. Yeah. They have better infrastructure, basically. Mm -hmm. Much better infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So now we're on Pine Ridge and 41. As you take a right here on Pine Ridge Road, you're driving over African American cemeteries that are underneath the highway. <laughs> so back in the before the, the 50s and 60s, they would bury the white people in the cemetery and the black people outside the cemetery. So as you're driving, as you take a right here on Pine Ridge Road, you're actually driving over uh, unmarked grave sites of black people. Right there, you're driving over the highway. Now they've they know that exists, but they don't want to talk about it. But what they should probably do if they had any decency is close off Pine Ridge Road at airport or Goodlet at Goodlet. And that would actually alleviate traffic because it would make people spin around. Uh, they should do a traffic study on that. First turn that whole area would be it would it would divert traffic around this bottleneck it would actually I, I mean I'm not I, they'd have to do a traffic study and see how it would work but I suspect that if they were to close off it would divert more traffic into Good and Frank Road and alleviating traffic on US 41 if they were to do that if they were to close Pine Ridge between US 41 and Goodlet what means that it would divert traffic into Immokalee into Vanderbilt and Golden Gate and alleviate traffic on 41 and they could turn that into a park of some sort um, probably like a park and a memorial or something you know more decent than driving over their cemetery it's just a nasty relic of the past of Florida but not only would it it would probably be more a decent respectful thing to do yeah um, but they probably won't do it right but even like from a from a traffic standpoint if they were just to close, you know, and, and go to the Frank Road, it's like less than a mile from here. If they were just to close Pine Ridge Road, all that traffic would have to just flow around. You know, or make it a one-way. Make it a one-way that, you know, they can, they, they have to do something about that. But again, Naples doesn't really have a, a long-term growth plan their plan is no plan uh, and then it's a misinformation camp you know what Naples budget you know what Naples is doing Naples budget for growth is a misinformation campaign that's basically what their budget is for example landfill landfill Lee County the next county north of here which is Fort Myers they have an incinerator here they have an old school landfill that leaches into the Everglades but instead of saying, wow, we need $50 billion to take care of this problem and start a, an incinerator. Instead of saying we need an incinerator, this isn't working. What do they say? Our landfill will last us 50 years. That's a misinformation campaign. What type of ugly crap is that? I like the license plate. Morocco. Man, that thing is ugly. It looks like a upside down... Looks like something out of a scrapyard. <laughs> Looks like a scrap metal truck from far away. I thought somebody was blowing a scrap metal. <laughs> but basically, Naples' plan for growth is a misinformation campaign, like the landfill. Instead of saying we should have an incinerator because this is an environmentally sensitive area, what do they say? Oh, our landfill will last 50 years. You're telling me that for the next 50 years, you're going to keep using a landfill that leaches water 
into the Everglades. And then they say, oh no, it's, it's safe. It doesn't contaminate the water. Okay, let me see somebody. The same people that say it's safe and it doesn't contaminate the environment. Let's catch a bass out of the canal in front of the landfill. And watch them eat it. And watch them eat it if it's safe. I bet they wouldn't do that. If they, the, the person who says, who goes there and says, oh no, uh, it's safe, it doesn't leach. It doesn't leach, let's catch a bass in front of that, in front of that canal, in front of landfill. Let's catch a bass from that canal and, and cook it and eat it, if it's safe. Come on, bro. But that's the thing about this the city, it's just like, in order to, to obtain their growth and their development, and uh, right here's Mercado on the right. In order for their developments, their contractors, their building, you know, they're making millions, if not billions of dollars of development. In order to do all that, they've annihilated the environment, they've lied to people about the environmental impacts of what they're doing. And now, half of the year you're smelling dead fish. I mean, it's bad. Uh, about 2005, I got a headache already. So you can definitely feel the red tide. It feels like nauseous and your throat feels kind of sick. So it's about 2015, 16, that's okay, Katie. We got to get out of here. That's when it really started to get bad. The red tide became persistent. Traffic became horrendous. Homelessness increased. Crime increased. Uh, and then they say, you know, crime is on the decrease in Naples. But we lived here. That's a lie. And all our crime rates are down. Come on, dude. I lived here for 20 years. I know what, how, how much crap Naples had back then. I know what's going on. I know on. what's going on here. You're, you know, that people believe all that. Like, oh, our crime rates are down. Like, dude, I lived here for 20 years. They don't report it. You know, I lived here for 20 years. You're not going to tell me crime rates are down. I know if crime is down because I lived here. Crime's not down. <laughs> we got a, We left our... We had a drug dealer set up shop in our, in our neighborhood. All the neighbors... One cop told me that they made 56 complaints in one year. Yeah. And then still didn't shut down the trap house. And they haven't. They won't. Mm -hmm. You know, they're scared. And uh, and then they published Naples is the best city to live in America. Right here, there used to be an Applebee's. That failed. That sweet tomatoes sweet failed. Sweet tomatoes. See that right there? Business on. We just passed. Sweet tomatoes failed. Walgreens, Walgreens failed. Walgreens failed. Look, right there, there used to be a, the Dollar Tree used to be a Walgreens. You can tell by the design. Right here in this intersection, this is in the corner of Immokalee and 41. There used to be an Applebee's right behind, right behind that. And I think tomatoes. that dollar, did the Dollar Tree fail? No, it's still open. It's still open. Oh, look, you know how hard it. Look at this place. Look how congested this place is. Do you know how hard it is for a Dollar Tree for a Walgreens to fail? Mm -hmm. In a place like this, the Dollar Walgreens closed and failed. Mm -hmm. And Applebee's right there in that inter, right here in this intersection, the Applebee's failed. Mm -hmm. It's just past the building. Remember, you know, I, 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 yeah. The notion of an Applebee's failing is unheard of. Mm -hmm. Applebee's here failed. Then they put in a Red Robin. What happened to the Red Robin? It failed. Yeah. And then the Stevie Tomato failed. And every business on this corner has failed. I don't know how the P.F. Changs is still open. Right. Because Judge Judy keeps it going. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Every business that hit up that, in, that there has failed. How does the Applebee's feel? How does the Red Robin feel? How does the Stevie Tomato? They fail because the rents are so high. And, and I, I don't even know. How do you explain to me how those types of businesses fail in an urban place like this? It's beyond me. Yeah. It just makes no sense. Then they open a Ferrari dealership here. Yeah. On the left. Yeah, in that plaza there used to be a Starbucks that closed and came over to here by the Publix. Right, there was a Starbucks there and they closed. Yeah, it, it didn't have a drive-through, so they moved it over here. Right. So they could have that drive-through. Right. There's a structural fire on this street. If you was, only a building went up right there, then this street. There's a structural fire on here. Yeah. This closed the pewter mug. Historic pewter mug closed. Yeah. Make it. They, they opened up further up the road. Yeah, I couldn't afford to probably sell the property. Mm -hmm. Peter Mug closed. The signs all beat up from it's the up for sale, yeah. Sad, man. Mm -hmm. Really, really sad. Alright, guys, so we're almost to the Lee County line. Take old 41. Okay. We'll do another video on Bonita. Okay. 
Alright guys, that right there is um, North Naples. Hey. I'm not gonna lie. Alright.